Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pustaya Bhuddhali, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namne. Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Srinivadi Pascha Chandesha Thayne. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So welcome to all the devotees here in Den Haag. We're having a program to discuss the importance of relationships with devotees, loving exchanges. We want to talk about cultivating this mood of loving exchanges. And Srila Prabhupada showed this from the very beginning of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Prabhupada gave his love to the devotees, to the people who came to him. He would cook for them. He would cook prasadam. He would distribute it to them. Gradually he would teach them how to cook. He would train them up. And when he would go to India, when he would come back, he would bring gifts for the different devotees. He would bring the saris for the ladies, different things, different presents to, to the... He wanted to show his appreciation for the devotees. So this is the mood of loving exchange. Rupa Goswami also describes this in his Upadesha Amrita. Those of you who have read the Nectar of Instruction, you will know that after first of all speaking about the importance of controlling the senses, and then he lists six things which are harmful for devotional service, and six things which are very good for devotional service, then he goes on to describe how to have exchanges with the devotees, how to cultivate the relationship with the devotees. We practice personal philosophy. We're, we're not impersonalists. We're, pers we're following the personal philosophy. We are persons. This is Lord Krishna as a supreme, the supreme person. We're also persons. And all of the devotees, all of our members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, and everyone who is not even a member of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, they're all persons. They're all individuals. And we have our own individual identity. And we want to re respect that identity, the, the, identi the individual's position. We like to give them honour and respect. So Rupa Goswami describes the loving exchange. He says, Dadati pratigrinati guyam akyati prichati bhongte bhajayate chaiva sadvidam priti lakshanam. Priti lakshanam. Loving exchange. Uh, six items of loving exchange dadati pratigrinati offering gifts in charity and accepting charitable gifts in the vedic culture the brahmanas are allowed to live by accepting charity but not only are they expected to accept charity they're also expected to give charity. It's not just only getting, but it's also giving. And Srila Prabhupada 
And Srila Prabhupada used to tell people that he did not come to the Western countries to beg, but he had gone there to give. He'd come to these countries like here, and he came, Prabhupada came to England, he came to Germany, as well as the USA, he went to France, he even visited Italy. So, of course, he came here in Holland, Amsterdam, and Prabhupada came to give. He came to give the most valuable thing. Maybe not the thing which we expected to get, but he came to give that most valuable treasure, the treasure of the love of God, the love of Krishna. So, this is uh, the mood of the real devotee, that they, they want to give. Uh, Kavi Karnapur, who wrote important literatures about uh, uh, teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he describes that brahmanas are supposed to follow any one of six occupations. A brahmana's duty is to worship the deity and to teach others to worship the deity. They're also expected to study scriptures and to teach the scriptures and they're allowed to accept charity and to give charity this is what is actually the prescribed duties of a, a brahman you don't find too many real brahmans today in the kali yuga you know i used to be engaged in India. I was staying in Calcutta for some time and we used to have to enroll people as life members to become a life member of the society. And we would go to places like Birla House. You know Birla's, they have a very big uh, industry, powerful family, one of the powerful Hindu families in India, the Birlas. So I would go to Birla house and many of people there, they'd say, yes, we are Brahman. You know, they're sitting there in the office, working in the corporate industry. And they're saying, we are Brahmins. My father or my grandfather, he was a priest, he was a pujari. And now, Mr. Thakur, what are you doing? Now, Mr. Sharma, what are you doing? Now, Mr. Purohit, what are you doing? Yes, we are working now in the office. <laughs> we have become sutra. <laughs> right? Doing the work. But in the Kali Yuga, everyone practically is like that. We're all sutra born like that. So the Brahmana is meant, meant to work in teaching the deity, worshipping the deity. That doesn't satisfy people very much. They want, they want to make a lot of money, you know, they're eager to have economic development, to have a big salary. It means more to them than simply ringing the bell and chanting mantras in the temple. So, Kali Yuga, people are in that, of that nature. Srila Vyasadeva describes, you know, we're, we're lazy, we're misguided. But unlucky and always disturbed. We don't like to do what the Vedas would tell us to do. The Vedas would say, worship the deity. You know, that is a, a religious duty for the Brahmana, 
to worship the deity and to study scriptures. People think, oh, I'll do that when, when I'm old, when I'm retired. Let me make money now. Later on, when I'm retired, I can do these things. Hmm. Anyway, uh, Kavi Karnapurna, he says that people in the, the Brahmanas in the Kali Yuga, they're expert in only one thing, taking the charity. <laughs> They don't give charity, they don't study scriptures, they don't worship the, but they take charity <laughs> and they'll live like that. So this is, of course, not how it's meant to be. They're meant to, they can take, they're meant to also give. And Srila Prabhupada did give. If people gave him charity, he would say, put it in my book fund and it would go into his book fund, money would be used to print books, and then the books could be distributed to the world. So Srila Prabhupada wanted to give. And not only did he want to give his books, but of course he, he had us give the holy name. That is a wealth which we all have in which we can all give, we can chant the holy name and distribute it everywhere. Lord Chaitanya, 500 years ago, was traveling around India and he was not with a big group of people. He didn't have a big yatra. He was just alone with one servant, but he would be chanting the holy name. When he went through Jarakanda forest, the wild animals were there. Lord Chaitanya was chanting the holy name and the animals would become gentle. The fierce animals like the tiger, they would embrace the gentle animals like the deer by the, by the potency of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He could transform all of these different animals, they would all become gentle and friendly and loving to each other. This is the effect of the holy name, chanting the holy name. It has that effect on people. It changes the heart. When we start to chant Hare Krishna, we can experience that transformation which comes about, a change in heart. Instead of being selfish, we will become selfless. It's an important transformation which we want to undergo in our Krishna consciousness. We want every day, we want to become less and less selfish and more and more selfless. We want to be more and more on the spiritual platform. To be selfish means to be on the bodily platform, thinking of ourself as this body. So that is the grossest ignorance. But as we become purified, then we understand more of our spiritual nature and we begin to think of ourselves as a spiritual being not only think of ourself as a spirit soul, but to see all others as spiritual beings. Srila Prabhupada had gone to Australia and the devotees there had arranged for him to go to a, a monastery. It was a, a Christian monastery and they were connected with the Christian saint St. Francis of Assisi. So these monks were very nice to Srila Prabhupada. They were very respectful and they arranged a very nice uh, fruit, fruit meal for Srila Prabhupada. And they were telling Srila Prabhupada that St. Francis used to address the flowers as my dear sister flower and my dear brother tree 
In other words, he was seeing all the flowers and plants and trees as brothers and sisters. And when Srila Prabhupada heard this, he said, oh, that is real God consciousness. Prabhupada greatly appreciated that, that this Christian saint had that kind of consciousness. So the monks very much appreciated Srila Prabhupada, that he had an appreciation for their patron saint. So we need to also develop this kind of feeling, loving exchanges for others. In the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Kapila is speaking to his mother Devahuti about deity worship. And he's, he explains how someone may be worshipping the deity and they may see Krishna in the deity, they may see the deity as Krishna, but they don't see Krishna in the heart of all the people. They simply see the deity as Krishna, but they don't see how Krishna is also present in the heart of all the people. So this, of, of that kind of worship, that is actually the Kanista platform. We're thinking God is simply in the temple, he's simply in the deity. Of course, God is not only in the deity, He's, he's in the heart of every living entity. But one has to be a little purified in order to understand like that. We want to come to that kind of consciousness. And when we come to that kind of consciousness, when we can actually see Krishna in the hearts of others, then that is Paramatma vision, the vision of Paramatma, described in Bhagavad Gita. Vidyavinaya sampani brahmani kavehastani suni chaiva svapaki cha samopandita darshana. The learned person sees with an equal vision the learned and gentle brahmana, the elephant, the cow, the dog, and the dog eater. They're seeing Paramatma in everyone. Of course, that's one level of realization, and we can go on from that to understand higher things, that the Lord is not only in the hearts of everyone, but He is also there as a person. And He's existing in His own abode, and He has His own home and he has his family and his friends. Krishna Janiki Namahi, Gokula Janiki Damahi. Right? Krishna has his home, he has his family and he's not alone. Krishna's with his devotees. And Krishna has a loving affection for his devotees. Not everybody appreciates how God is kind and loving. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Samoham sarvabhuteshu name dvishosti napriya yebajanti tumam bhakta mayite teshu chapyam. Lord Krishna is saying to Arjuna, I envy no one, I'm equal to everyone. But whoever renders service to me, he is a friend, he is in me, and I am in him. So Lord Krishna begins by saying, he's equal to everyone. And we may think, oh, well, that, that's, see, that sounds nice, but it, I don't see it. It doesn't seem like he's equal to everyone. And someone's in, very happy and comfortable in the material world, and other people are struggling with so many problems and difficulties, it doesn't seem like he's equal to everyone. But we have to understand the Lord has his own way of relating to people, 
according to how we relate to him. It's up to us how we want to relate to Krishna. And as we relate to the Lord, he reciprocates in return. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has also said, as we surrender, I reward you accordingly. Some people surrender more than others. It's not that everyone's the same. Some people are more surrendered, they're more willing to give themselves completely to the service of Krishna. In others, they're very conditional about what they want to give to Krishna and how much they want to give to Krishna. So Krishna understands everyone's mood and he relates to everyone in return. And then Prabhupada also said, well, he quotes Srimad Bhagavatam and says, uh, Harisheta Danam Shanai. Lord Krishna is saying, when I am very merciful to someone, I take everything away from them. Special mercy. Right? <laughs> I take everything away from them. In that helpless condition, they surrender to me. So that is a, a special reciprocation from Krishna. Right? Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada also said he was in that situation, that Krishna took everything away from him, that initially he was thinking, I will do business and I will make money and I will give it to my guru. But his business failed and he lost the, the money. People cheated and so on, people didn't pay him things. So his business eventually folded, closed up, and Srila Prabhupada had financial difficulties, and then the family, seeing he no longer had any money, they became dis disrespectful. They didn't have the same respect for him anymore, because he was not providing for their needs the same. So it created some difficulty. And Srila Prabhupada understood this is the arrangement of Krishna. And he understood it was time for him to go out from the house. Krishna took away everything from him. His comfortable home and the respectful family and the business, they were all gone. So it was an arrangement of Krishna to facilitate surrender so that he could come closer to Krishna and take up more direct service to Krishna. Only devotees, it takes a pure heart to see the hand of Krishna in this situation. Not everyone can think of it as, that, oh, special mercy. <laughs> Others will lament, oh, why Krishna could do this to me? Why Krishna took everything from me? What did I do? I didn't do anything to deserve this. You know, people will often talk in this manner. They'll feel some pain and some resentment to Krishna. Krishna has not been very kind to me. I think Krishna forgot me. <laughs> so it takes the pure heart to take advantage of every situation to come closer to Krishna. And we see that, uh, for example, how Queen Kunti describes her relationship with Krishna in her prayers to Lord Krishna. She is saying, Vipada Shantuta Taswad, Tatra Tatra Jagadguru. She is saying, Vipada, calamities. I wish that all these calamities would happen again and again. Oh, 
you can think, did you, have, did you ever have calamities in your life? Maybe only a little, right? <laughs> Sometimes calamities, disasters, trouble, or oh, things went wrong. All right, so Queen Kunji says, I want these calamities to happen again and again. Because when there are calamities, then I see Krishna. And seeing Krishna means I will not see birth and death again. So this is the thinking of a devotee. A very advanced devotee, right? You have, have to be somewhat advanced to think like that. We have to train ourselves for these kind of things to happen. Certainly, in the course of our life, we will have difficulties, we, we have to expect there will be problems. How we face them will depend on our level of Krishna consciousness. Will we take these difficulties as an opportunity to come closer to Krishna? Or will it take us away from Krishna? And sometimes that happens also that people have some big problem, things go very wrong in their life, and they just have no more faith in Krishna. They think, he has not been kind to me. <laughs> so, we want to understand everything. We, we say, we want to see everything in the eyes of the scripture. Shastra Chaksus. See through the eyes of Scripture. Don't just use our own mundane, limited vision to see things. But try to understand everything as it's described by Lord Krishna in Shastra. So it's very important for us all to be reading Scriptures regularly studying the scriptures. Srila Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, he's always speaking to his disciples, and he has a lot of disciples. He has like 70,000 disciples, you know. And he's, and he's telling them, I want you all to study scriptures. And we're very fortunate that in our society, we have so many nice courses to help us to study the scriptures. Now, some of you may be fortunate, like these two, they went to Radhadesh, and they studied at Radhadesh. They stayed there for some time, and they did courses like Bhakti Shastri, and studied there. Now, not everybody has said, a bit opportunity to be able to just pack up and go to Radhadesh and stay for a year or two. Of course, it's very wonderful if you can, but not everyone can do it. But any, by the grace of technology, you can study in your own home because we have these courses available online. You know, everyone has a mobile phone I'm sure every one of you have got a mobile phone and you can use it to log in, to hear courses and to attend classes and to take these courses like Bhakti Shastri and study the scriptures. It's very important for us because it will train our mind how to deal with difficulties which come in our life. So Bhakti Shastri is one of the courses which is facilitated with our ISKCON society. And you can attend the classes online. Usually they have like usually two classes a week, usually Saturday and Sunday for a couple of hours, a couple of hours each class. But study Bhagavad Gita, and learn the philosophy. It's very important 
everyone has to learn the philosophy, learn slokas from Bhagavad Gita and recite these slokas. Often people, unfortunately, they learn slokas and then they forget them. They ask them, well, what was that verse? Oh, uh, we don't remember. We have to use everything, what we learn. And we have to use it to remind ourselves and to remind others also, to teach others. We want to give Krishna consciousness. The more we give Krishna consciousness to others, the more we get it ourselves. Right? The, the more we chant the holy name, the louder we chant, the more people hear and benefit, and we also benefit. So we want to take advantage of this Krishna conscious process, speaking about Krishna, telling everyone about Krishna. This is the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he was in Kurmakshetra, on the way coming from Jagannath Puri, out of uh, Puri, going south towards Chennai, going towards Vishakapatna, there's Kurmakshetra. And Lord Chaitanya was there and he met a Brahmana and the Brahmana brought him to his home. And the Brahmana showed very nice, loving respect for Lord Chaitanya. He brought him to his home and fed him, honored him. Lord Chaitanya was very happy. Lord Chaitanya was then taking his leave. And just as he was preparing to go, the Brahmana approached Lord Chaitanya and fell at his feet and begged him, please take me with you. I can no longer bear the pain of material life. So, uh, it's not uncommon, of course. The material world is, can be very painful sometimes. So this Brahmana requested Lord Chaitanya to, to take him with him. The Brahmana was a family man, he had children, he had a family depending on him. So Lord Chaitanya was, of course, was not so callous as to just tell the Brahmana, oh, come with me, yes, I will save you, I will take you out of the mati. Lord Chaitanya chastised him and told him, no, no, don't speak like this again. He told you, stay where you are. Yari deki tari koho Krishna upadesh. Amaragai guruhana tarai desh. Very important instructions Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him. He told him, wherever you go and whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. And in this way, you become a spiritual teacher and save the land. So Lord Chaitanya said, Amar Agaya Guruhan, by my order, you become a teacher. Tell people about Krishna. It's the order of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to all of us, that we should become teachers by telling people about Lord Krishna. And it's not difficult. What do we have to do? The best thing we can do is to chant the holy name. Nice Sankirtan. I was fortunate. I came to the Krishna Consciousness Movement in 1971. At that time, our Krishna Consciousness Movement was very new. It was just beginning. There were not many devotees. In London, for example, we didn't even have 20 devotees. We were, we were all young. I had just finished my college studies. I graduated. I'd been working for a few months. But I met the devotees and I was convinced. I thought, I want to do this. I thought this is more worthwhile than what I was doing in the job. So I gave up the job and I was living with the devotees. 
And our program every day was to go for Sankirtan. We'd go out into the streets of London and we'd go every day, morning and afternoon. We'd spend the whole day out on the streets chanting, doing Sankirtan, giving the holy name to people. And of course, we were also getting the holy name ourselves. We were associating with Krishna by chanting his name. It's very powerful. Prabhupada ordered all the devotees should join the Sankirtan party as soon as possible. It's very nice to go for Sankirtan. Nowadays, of course, you don't get so many people going for Sankirtan. They do a lot of things, go to the job, right? Go to the office, go to the factory, whatever. But if you can go for Sankirtan, it's also very nice, very powerful to go out on the streets and to chant the holy name and to give Krishna to others. There is giving. People may say, why don't you do something useful? Why don't you get a job? No, no, you have the job. I'm <laughs> doing my job, you do your job. Yeah. We have to preach to people, we have to explain to them there's a need for the chanting of the holy name. Srila Prabhupada went to Geneva 50 years ago. Actually, just this month, we were celebrating the 50th anniversary of Srila Prabhupada coming to Geneva. He spent 10 days there. So while he was there, he met the mayor from Geneva. And the mayor of Geneva asked him, Swamiji, what will happen if all the young men become Hare Krishnas? <laughs> because the, the mayor was seeing so many young people join the Hare Krishna movement. And so he asked Prabhupada, he said, Swamiji, what will happen if, if they all, bec all the young men become Hare Krishna? And so Prabhupada explained to him about Varnashram. He said, well, not everybody will be you know, Brahmana, not everyone will be chanting Hare Krishna. There will be also the, the Kshatriya, you know, the, the managerial type of people. There will be the Vaishya, the business people, and there will be the workers also. But it's very nice if there is a Brahminical class of people who chant the holy name. Shankaracharya, Sripad Shankaracharya brought back the Vedic system into the world. It had become degraded and that was where Buddhism came. Buddhism, you know, came because of the degradation of the Brahminical class. The Brahmanas had become corrupt and degraded. They were encouraging animal slaughter. And so Lord Buddha came and led the people away from the Vedas, led the people away from Varnashram. People thought, very good, we're all equal. Previously they were thinking, you know, Brahmanas are high class and we're all low class. But now Buddhism was coming, we're all equal, we're all the same. So they thought, it's very good. Of course, after some time they realized we're not all the same. It's not all the same. Not everyone is the same. There are differences. Just like we see, some people are very intelligent and others are not. Some people are very wealthy, others are not. Some people are very, uh, well, very, very uh, pious and others are more sinful. People are not the same. Why? Well, it's due to our samskars, our past karma. But the Vedic culture is there to divide the society according to guna and karma. Chatur varnam maya shristam guna karma vibhagasaha. 
Krishna said, I created the divisions of society according to guna, quality, and karma, work. So according to quality and work, not according to birth. Birth is not the system. Birth is an advantage to people, but it's not the criterion. It's certainly a help if you have a good birth. But it's not, just like your father may be a high court judge, it does not mean you're also a high court judge. Your father may be doctor, it doesn't mean you're also doctor. You have to qualify. So your father is a brahmana, you should also become like a brahmana, cultivate the brahminical qualities as described in Bhagavad Gita, qualities of the brahmana. Samo damasta pasocham shantir arjavam evacha jnana vijnanam astikyam brahma karma svabhavacham. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the different qualities of the different varnas. Brahmana is the head of the site, the social body. He has nine qualities. It's the most challenging position in society. You have to have nine qualities to be actual Brahmana. Brahmana should be peaceful, self-controlled, pure. He should be austere, he should have knowledge, he should have detachment, he should have religiousness. These things are all required for the Brahmana. Brahmana, uh, he, he, he's caring for others. There is Brahmana and there is Kripana. Hmm? Brahmana is a generous person. Kripana means miser. What you would say, conjures, huh? Conjures, right? The miser, he's got money, he likes to count it. He likes to play with it, he likes it, he doesn't spend it. Maybe he doesn't have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like that, anyway. Brahmana, who use whatever he has, he has to give. To others, he wants to give to everyone. He doesn't want to keep for himself. Right? Kripana, the miserly person, he will waste the human life. But the Brahmana will use it nicely for others. We see examples like uh, Dadichi Muni in Srimad Bhagavatam. You've read about Dadichi Muni, how Vritasura was killing the demigods, Indra approached the Lord, he asked Lord Narayan, can you kill him for me? Lord Narayan, I'm not going to kill him, you kill him yourself. Yeah. And Lord Narayan told you go to Dadichi and ask Dadichi to give the bones from his body and then take his bones to Vishwakarma, he'll make you a weapon, he could use that weapon to kill him. So it sounds easy enough, right? <laughs> All you have to do is go to the Dichi and ask him, could you give me the bones from your body? <laughs> you know, not a, not a small thing to do. But the Dichi was very renounced. He was detached from the worldly situation. He was a real Brahmana. So Indra came to the Dichi and he asked the Dichi, my dear, Dadichi Muni, could you please give me the bones from your body? And Dadichi said to him, Oh, don't you know the body is the thing we are most attached to? Actually, Dadichi just wanted to hear some philosophy from him. Dadichi understood his purpose, but for the sake of hearing some philosophy, he spoke like that to him. And so, Indra said to the DG, he said, well, you know, charity is something, it, it can be very difficult to give charity sometimes, but it's also very difficult to ask for charity sometimes. When you think about it, you know, you can go to people, you ask people for charity, and people, they may want to give, 
but they're just not able to give. They don't have the resources. They don't have the economic power to be able to give charity. And for other people to ask for charity can also be very difficult. You know, sometimes we ask people, you know, can you, can you ask some people, give some donations? Oh, oh, you know, they don't want to ask anybody to give anything, you know. It's difficult for them to ask for charity. <laughs> sometimes you, people going out on book distribution, some people they have a difficult time to ask people to give something for the book. So some, for some people it's natural, and for others it's very difficult. Anyway, it was a nice answer coming from Indra, and Dadiji thought, very good, all right, yes, very nice. And he gave up his body, and Indra took the bones, went to Vishwakarma, Vishwakarma made his Bajra weapon, and Indra came and they fought, and he was able to defeat, he was able to cut the body of Vishwamitra to pieces and defeat Vritasura. So, charity, giving charity, very good thing to do. Of course, there's different kinds of charity. There's charity in goodness, charity in passion, and charity in ignorance. Just like if you give money to a, an alcoholic he may come to you, he wants to buy another beer, or somebody's a drug addict and they want to go and get more drugs. You don't want to give these kind of people money. They're going to do, go and do more sinful activity. And you, if you give them money, then you get karma for that also. And to give in charity and passion means you want to get the credit for it, you know? that you want people to know that you're very pious, you're very noble, you did this. And, but a lot of people, they like that, you know, they, they would like to know how much, you know, my name will be there. And they, they'll give more charity if their name is put in bigger letters, you know. And, but charity in the mode of goodness is done without others knowing about it. And it, it, it's given, a charity in the mode of goodness will be given to the, the service of the saintly persons that they will use it for some worthwhile purpose, like printing literature, building temples, and so on, these kind of things. This is the activities of the saintly persons. So saintly people also use money they're not afraid of money. Sometimes people promote that, that, oh, a real sadhu won't touch money. But a real saintly person will, will touch money and they'll use it all for Krishna. They're not afraid of it. They'll take it and use it for Krishna's service. That is proper use of wealth. We shouldn't think that we have to, oh, don't touch it. Oh, you'll get contaminated. <laughs> no, if you use everything for Krishna. Rupa Goswami has taught, Nirbandha Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Uchate. Actual renunciation to use everything in relation to Krishna. So, we like to do like that. We try to dovetail everything in Krishna's service. Krishna conscious this technology we're using these mobile phones and amplifiers and things we're using them in the service of Lord Krishna it's not material they're being spiritualized by being used in the service of Lord Krishna so charity in the mode of goodness is the highest charity and the highest charity is to give for Krishna Consciousness, to help to distribute Krishna Consciousness everywhere. So our devotees, we would go out on Sankirtan and we would do like that. We would be distributing books and chanting the holy name, trying to give Krishna Consciousness. 
So offering gifts and accepting gifts, that's the loving reciprocation. Prabhupada describes in that purport to the Upadeshamrita that life members, people give us an amount of money to become a life member and we give them our literature and we give them prasadam and so on. When they come to the temple, we will give them prasadam and we try to show our appreciation for their contribution to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And Prabhupada also described about how that young, the, the Englishman George Harrison, who was a famous, world-famous musician, how he purchased the Bhaktivedanta Manor and donated it to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So, of course, that was an act of very great charity on his behalf. Krishna had given him a lot of money and he wanted to use it for the service of Krishna. And he met Prabhupada and pra Prabhupada had spoken to him. And Prabhupada never asked him to do anything, but he himself wanted to do it. He was inspired from the heart that he should do this for Krishna. So Lord Krishna acts on the heart. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam. The dadi buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantite. To those who are constantly devoted to me and who worship me with love, I give them the understanding by which they may come to me. So Krishna acts on the heart. He tells us, you know, do this. Give this. You've got a lot of money, use it for Krishna. Build a temple. If you have a lot of money, you know, you can build a temple for Krishna. If you don't have much money, if you just have a little garden, grow some tosi in your garden. Grow tosis and offer the tosis to Krishna. Everyone can worship Krishna according to their means. Kolaveka Sridhar was a nice example. Kolaveka Sridhar, a great devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had only a few banana trees. He had some small banana plantation. But whatever income he got from his bananas, every day he would spend 50% of his income to worship Mother Ganges. So, and a very ideal example. Uh, wealthy people sh should do like that. Rupa Goswami, when he was retiring from his uh, service in the Mohammedan government, he had amassed a lot of wealth and he dis divided it in a very exemplary manner. 50% was given to the service of the Vaishnavas and Brahmins. 25% was given to the family members and 25% was kept for his own emergency purpose. Srila Prabhupada said this very good, very exemplary manner. Do like that. Everyone's encouraged. Try to give 50%. Of course, that's for wealthy people. For ordinary people, ordinary common people, they don't have much money. They're just struggling to maintain their daily life. They cannot be expected to give 50%. They're just maintaining their life. But those who have a lot of wealth, like Rupa Goswami, you know, he was very wealthy as well. Had so much wealth, could fill a boat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, 50%, okay. Those who have the means, they should use it for the service of Krishna. Uh, if they don't use it for Krishna, it will go to doctors and lawyers. <laughs> right? That's where the money goes these days. You get involved in legal disputes or you spend the money all in hospitals giving paying doctors to do things for you. So that's not very pleasant. You don't get any benefit from that. But if you give your money to build a temple for Krishna, then you go to Krishna 
you can go to Krishna, Krishna's home will be there, Krishna will welcome you because you built a home for Krishna here, so when you go back to Godhead, Krishna has a home for you there. Reciprocation, loving reciprocation. Krishna is inviting all of us to participate in his pastimes. We have this opportunity. So we offer gifts in charity, we accept charity, we offer prasadam, we accept prasada, and we inquire confidentially and reveal our minds in confidence. Inquiring confidentially, we should inquire about the subject matter of the scriptures and the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. We want to understand it more deeply, try to understand the message of the scriptures. Certainly there are many points which are not so easily understood. But we can inquire. We can inquire from the devotees. We should hear from the saintly devotees, sadhu, shastra and guru. So hearing from the books is also very good. We have commentaries by the acharyas and we have association, so many sadhus in our Krishna consciousness movement. And you're fortunate, you're getting visitors, they're coming here. In the past so many saintly devotees came here we know His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj was coming here regularly for many years. I was in Zurich, they told me he came there for 30 years. Every year he would come. And so was he also coming in Holland? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, for many years. He's coming also here in Holland. And so you were so fortunate to be blessed by his uh, divine association and Srila Prabhupada had come also in 1970s he'd come here he'd installed the deities he'd initiated a devotee also as sannyas I remember so certainly Holland has been blessed with a lot of dust of the feet of the devotees you have to take advantage and go on and make your life successful. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Any questions? Anyone? Yes, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for your wonderful. Uh, inspiration. Actually, I had a question on these exchanges. When we do it with people who are not devotees, do we inherently also develop their qualities? Because when we deal with outside world and at work and you know, majority, we don't stay in a community of devotees. So it happens that we do sometimes have these six elements that happen with non-devotees. So how to avoid such association? Yes, well, we do want to be careful about where we take food from and who you accept food from. If you accept food from non-devotees, certainly it can be karmic. Some karma will be there. Even they may say it's vegetarian, but still we should be cautious about taking food from non-devotees. Because we say disease comes from the mouth, begins in the mouth. What you put in the mouth it can cause you the problems. So you take food which is prepared by non-devotees. It is certainly not conducive to our spiritual advancement. What you may do, you may accept it and just put it aside and not actually eat it. Yeah. You, you have to make some excuse. You have to say, you know, you can say, oh, I have, I'm sorry, I don't take this food, I don't eat at this time, I, you know, some kind of, you have to make some kind of 
excuse to explain why you're not taking the food. Sometimes people get a little offended that you won't take their food. But what to do? We have our principles. Srila Prabhupada used to say, he said, we dress to please others. You know, you go to office and so on, you have to dress in a particular way. You're working with people and you, you will dress according to the standard. But when it comes to eating, we eat to suit our own self. We don't eat just to suit others. We eat according to what is good for us. And so you simply tell them that, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't eat these things. I don't eat out. You can say also like that. But we do want to be very cautious about taking food from non-devotees and non-devotional sources. Taking money from people, you get money from people, you want to use it for Krishna. You should give it for Krishna. You take money from other people, then certainly karma will be there. And so the best thing to do with it is, you know, build a temple, right? <laughs> give it for building the temple. Otherwise, yes, you'd be implicated in karma. Mm -hmm. Taking money, it, it's certainly karmic, a lot of karma involved there with money. And we want to be very cautious, but when we take money from other people, we use it all for Krishna, nothing for our own sense gratification. It's a, a challenge, but it's an, an, an important aspect of Krishna consciousness. Lord Chaitanya instructed like this, uh, if you read the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the example is there concerning Kamala Kanta Vishvasa. You know the past time Kamala Kanta Vishvasa, he was a secretary of Advaita Acharya. And he wrote a note to the King, Pat, King Maharaj Prataparudra. He told Maharaj Prataparudra that Advaita Acharya is the personality of Godhead and he is in debt 300 rupees. <laughs> and he was asking the king if he could pay off the debt for Advaita Acharya, you see. And so somehow this note came to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu read the note and said, Oh, he said, oh it's very good. He has Advaita Acharya is the personality of Godhead. This is true. Certainly true, Advaita Acharya is the personality of Godhead. That's very good. But, he said, then he said, he is in debt 300 rupees. That is an offense to say like that. How could you be God and be in debt 300 rupees? Right? It doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction. So Lord Chaitanya said, this is a great offense. He said, he cannot come in my association again. I don't want that person to come. And so Advaita Acharya then heard about it, and Advaita Acharya came to Lord Chaitanya and protested. And he said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, why are you giving him more mercy than me? <laughs> he said, when I preach the Yoga Vasista, you only beat me, but you're sending him away. You're not even going to give him any association, you're giving him a greater punishment than I got. You're giving him more mercy than me. So Lord Chaitanya said, okay, okay, bring him here. And Lord Chaitanya then instructed him, you must be very careful. We don't want the devotees to take money from any materialistic people. Right? Brahmanas, strict Brahmanas will be very careful about where they take money from, who they take money from. They will not accept charity from sinful people because they know a lot of karma is there. So, of course, we would go out on Sankirtan and we get money often from sinful people, but it's not for us. We give it all to Krishna. It all goes to the temple. It all goes for Krishna. So, 
Krishna can absorb the karma. We cannot. If we take it for our own pocket, we get karma. We cannot absorb that karma. Lord Krishna, he can take the karma. He's not going to be affected. But we will be affected. So we have to be very careful. Okay. Yes, Maharajji. Thank you. Um, I have a question about how to see when we get problems, like we are building another temple, but we get, yeah, there's still there's um, some difficulties coming on our path. So how to see, how to understand what Krishna wants from us? Well, we have to be guided by sadhu, shastra and guru. You have to constantly pray to Lord Krishna to reveal to you what he wants and you have to be willing to hear from the sadhus and the shastra and the guru and they will reveal to you what Krishna wants. Not just simply by our own efforts but by the grace of association, simply devotees. And by hearing from the Shastra, then it will become clear to us what Lord Krishna wants. So, at, at times the devotees were uh, unsure what to do. You could read the book written by His Holiness Giri Raj Swami, Let There Be a Temple. And he describes about the temple in Juhu and the land and the dispute. And the devotees were all thinking, oh no, this land is useless. No, we don't want this land. There's too much trouble and everything. But Prabhupada wanted it. <laughs> and Prabhupada was determined to hold on and to fight and to get it. So it was a big battle. But in the end, the devotees won. So, we have to be guided by superior authority. We have to accept superior authority, the guidance of superior authority, and they can reveal to us what can be, what should be done, what is the proper action, what's required. So we have, we have to also see, you know, how much Lord Krishna facilitates. Is he giving? Is he providing? Just like, you, do you, is, are you getting land? Have you got, a, you, you've got a piece of land. So that's a great advantage, you know. It's an indication that Krishna wants something. He's giving you a piece of land. Yeah. And, you know, you got it also at a, a, a very reasonable rate, not not except not very expensive. So it's an indication to us that Krishna is facilitating. Krishna wants something. He wants us to do something. He wants a temple. Hmm. Hmm. So you have to do it. You have to endeavor. Get the temple built and once you once you get it, you know you know I was in uh, 1978, Prabhupada left the world in 1977. 1978, I was asked to take charge of the Hyderabad temple. Hyderabad, we have a temple in Abbots, if you go to Hyderabad. We have, and the land had been donated by Pula Reddy. Our movement, very, we were sm very small in those days, you know. And in India, most of the devotees were all foreigner, you know, white-skinned. So uh, we were, we were, it was not easy for us to get funds. Somehow, you know, like Vrindavan, Krishna Balaram, that land, it was given, luckily. One Indian man was proud of this, I believe, come from London and and the man who was giving the land, Mr. Saraf, 
He said, I'm not sure if Radharani wants me to give this land to you or not. And, and he, he, he had to, they did a toss up, you know. <laughs> they did a toss up. And if it comes one way, you get the land. If it comes another, you don't get it. And somehow it came that he got the land. So Prabhupada was very pleased, you know. But otherwise, it was very difficult. Everything was very difficult. And we had no money. Bhaktivedanta Manor, George Harrison donated it. We had no money. Uh, so Hyderabad, Pularedi, he was a sweet shop owner. He had this land, he gave this land to Prabhupada. We built the temple. But it was a very basic temple. I, had, I was asked to be the temple president. We were about eight devotees and we had Gorni Thai, Radha Madan Mohan, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, big and small on each, and really big, you know, the deities there are very big. And temple also is quite big, you know, quite a big temple. But, you know, the temple, it was only basic structure was there. There was not even a door on the temple. I used to sleep in the doorway every night because uh, there was no door. You know, I, I, we just had a little curtain in front of the deities and everything was very basic, you know, but we got the temple opened. That once the temple, and now I went there just last year and wow, you should, it's so beautiful. They've got more land and everything has been expand, been decorated more lavishly and one donors came and they gave marble and so much decoration in the temple became so beautiful it's just oh it's such a transformation when i was there it was so simple so basic and now it's so wonderful it's wow it's just such a transformation so like that you know you you have to just start off simple we start off very basic simple and gradually build up you know we do Ratiatra, I remember, when I first went to Bangkok, Thailand, went to Bangkok, we started doing Ratiatra, and we had a little chariot, tiny chariot, you know, just a, a one person could pull it, you know, <laughs> and little deities, and we do Ratiatra like that in the beginning, but now we have a big chariot, and we have thousands of people all coming, you know, and it's a big festival, it builds up. So the same way, the temple, you know, you get the temple opened and gradually, gradually you can build it up, you know. Just, Prabhupada was just encouraging the devotees, get the temple opened. And then once it's open, then you keep it opened. It doesn't close. Okay. So we have, you have to see Krishna's plan. Krishna will help. He's got some plan. He wants to see how much we're ready to surrender. And he will reciprocate. There's no doubt. Maharaja, I have a question. Yes. About charity. He said, um, charity, we have to give in, uh, for Krishna. But how is it there when uh, is it to help others? I, for example, I got a letter from UNICEF to be a sponsor for uh, for UNICEF, but I don't know is that a uh, charity in goodness or uh, it's not for uh, it's to help children, you know, in a poor country. Well, that's material charity. Yes. That's not transcendental. You know, that's certainly material. It may be the mode of goodness, but, you know, you know it, it's material. Yes. It's not going to bring you spiritual benefit. Yeah. It will bring you material benefit, but not spiritual benefit. You do charity for UNICEF, you know, the helping children, yeah, very pious, good, but it's not spiritual. So the highest charity is on the spiritual platform. That ch charity on the spiritual platform will help to awaken you to Krishna consciousness. 
charity on the you do charity for on the material platform will bring you material benefit means next life you may be a child you may get fed or you may get taken care of Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Pichai, go back to Vrindakiya. Sure.